Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Autogefühl. Jonas and I have come to the outskirts of Munich today to bring you a very special preview of a series of firsts with BMW. This is the first time that these cars have been available in the lineup as M models. And for the first time ever, BMW are launching them at exactly the same time as the M competition models. But not only that, they will be powered by a brand new Super Beast six cylinder inline engine. So today, we're going to be taking a closer look just to whet your appetite a little bit and let you know what you should be expecting. So the world's going to SUV. Well, we've known that for a while, but it did leave a bit of a gap in the performance sector because of course, when cars got that much bigger, they weren't able to deliver the same in terms of power and performance that we come to expect and love from their smaller brethren. But don't worry, that gap is being filled over time. We've seen the success of models like Porsche in terms of bringing people what they still really crave from a car. So I'm personally very excited to see what BMW can achieve once they, once they mentioned, once they decided that they were going to bring out performance models of the X3 and X4. These cars have both been very popular and have performed well in the latest iteration, but if there's been one thing that people have been asking for, it's more power. It is for this bigger performance model. Now, I think the first thing to mention with these cars is you can see from the front profile quite how similar these two models are. So we're gonna focus on just one in order to give you a sense of the front and then show you from the side how things really start to mix up once you start moving along. I think the first thing to mention right from the start is what a great job BMW have done with their larger SUVs of maintaining their unique BMW look. I always think it's interesting to look right at the front of this car and if you can, just visually knock out the bottom third. It's really interesting to see the DNA of BMW sitting within this kidney grill and the way in which the bonnet wraps up into the front of the car. Really the only differences between this and what you'd standardly expect is we have a shorter, more snub nose and a greater degree of drop off on the bonnet. But there's so much striking similarity and it really has managed to maintain that characteristic that's been so popular and so successful right throughout the vehicle. Now, this isn't only an M model, this is the competition. And that means that we have to have a lot more aggression. It's a difficult style point to hit because what we want to do is to show the sportiness, show the power, the performance. But at the end of the day, you're still gonna be driving around in this car. You're gonna to need to pick up kids from school. You're gonna to need to go to the supermarket. It isn't a supercar, so it shouldn't look like a supercar. And I think they've hit a nice balance here. If you look at the way that the accented features of the M model have been brought even further by the addition of the competition badge, then you can get a sense of how performance meets style and delivers something really quite special. Look at these accents in the bumper here. Now, these are carbon fiber details. They don't come as standard. These are gonna be available on the competition model slightly later on in the year. To start with, they're just gonna be plain black. But I always say to people, if you're gonna pay out the money and it isn't a little in order to have a model like this, you may as well go a little bit more and get it just the way you want it. And the nice thing with the competition models right throughout the lineup is there are lots of different options so you really can make it your car. That said, there are some things that are standard whichever way you go. We need to have these big air intakes on this car because the new engine, which we'll talk a lot more about later, is producing an awful lot of power and that requires an awful lot of special cooling. So here, where the design has to meet the practical use of the car is in making sure that we have sufficient airflow whilst at the same time giving the car the aggressive sporty look that it needs while still managing to make it look stylish enough that you're not gonna be embarrassed driving it around anywhere. For my taste, this is really a great compromise of all of those things. I know that this is an M competition just from standing a little distance away 
and looking at it. And I have to be honest, just by doing that, I'm already wanting to drive it. If the front has wet your appetite, how's this for a side profile? Well, the first thing to mention are these wheels here. So on the M model, they are 20 inches, but on the competition, you get an extra one. So we have 21 inch custom wheels. And as you can see, the styling fits in very nicely with the body. Now there's been a lot of real effort, I think has been made by BMW to make sure that some of those competition features that we know and like so very much elsewhere have been echoed and mirrored here. So it really feels that it sits well within the lineup. So for all M fans, I'm sure you will notice this styling of mirror, not joined at the top, but very stylish and really noticeable. This again, as with the bumper is in carbon fiber, you're not gonna be able to get that on the competition straight away. It comes out slightly later on. Now, here is a bit of an opinion splitter. This model has optional roof bars. And because obviously we're looking at the X4, which has that sweeping coupe line. And I have to be honest, I really like these bars. The reason is this is a big, aggressive, muscular car. And with this nice detail here, it just raises the profile slightly and stops you looking at this huge block down in the bottom section. Now there's nothing wrong with that. And that's purely just taste. But I like this black accent and I especially like the way it draws your eye right towards this lovely coupe sweep. Now, whether you're gonna to wanna to go with this or with the X3, which is obviously gonna come equipped with a little bit more room, a lot of that's gonna come down to personal taste. But in terms of just appreciating the pure aesthetic of the way that a car sits on the road, I really like the way that this car presents from the side. Does it keep looking that good when we get round to the back? Let's go have a look. Round at the back, we can see some more competition specific features. You have a look at the way the roof has been sculpted in with this spoiler at the back. It's very subtle. It looks completely intentional and almost as if you just can't imagine the back of this car being any other way. I really like these competition carbon filers, filer, carbon fiber spoilers on the rear. They're discreet, they're stylish, but they really just give you a little visual accent at the back. Coming down slightly further, we have these wraparound, very angular rear lights and then this massive boot. Coming down further still, you can see we've got the carbon fiber finish on the bottom here and these black enamel exhaust pipes, which I'm pretty sure you can see even from there are absolutely not just there for cosmetic purposes. Now they do have special flaps on the inside which helps regulate the noise and that just helps get just that little bit more enjoyment out of the song of the engine when you hear it powering up. It's hard for me to see what they could have done with this back to stop it looking quite so bulbous. That is a feature of this particular model. In order to make all of those lines work and the dynamic of the car, it does present you with an awful lot of rear estate at the rear. So it does look quite bulbous from a distance, but combined with the swooping line of the roof, I still think it's quite nice to look at. And I'm being pretty modest when I say that. If that swooping coupe roof line of the stunning X4 isn't quite your thing, or let's be honest, we're always a little bit worried about headroom in the rear, then we have the X3. And that is gonna provide you with a little bit more of a usable rear. Now, this is a tricky one because in terms of practicality, obviously you are going to want to have a little bit more space in the interior. And I have no doubt without even having steps in the car that the back experience in this is going to be more comfortable and practical. But, and for me, it is a bit of a but, if you're going to have a car where performance is key, then I think the styling is also important. So it's definitely gonna come down to taste, but I'm a fan of the M4. I think to hell with it. You know, I really want it to deliver everything I want aesthetically. But that's from the side perspective. You can see that even though we have this 
tapering off of the roof line and we have the drawing out of these windows here to try and sleeken out the back of this car. There's no denying that we have more bulk back here. So for my money, the side profile is not quite as nice as it is on the X4. But how does it impact on the design round at the back? And this is where I switch my allegiance. Having said that, I think the profile of the X4 works better. Once you come round to the back, you start recognizing the cost of having that coupe line. So without even having gone inside the car, here we can see what additional space does to the rear. And I like the way this breaks up the car visually. Again, we have a special air rediffuser just for the rear of the car, which I think looks really nice. This massive back, which is in common with the X4, for me is very much visually broken up by the additional real estate that we have here. So I don't find the back of this car as bulbous or I guess as aggressively large as with the X4. So for the rear, I'm gonna go with this one. While we're round here, let's take a look in the boot and see how we're doing for space. Now, if we fold those seats down, so we can have a look and see just what we're looking at, we end up with a total space available to us of 1600 liters. Now, as you can see from just that one seat being dropped, that's plenty of space. What's particularly interesting to me about this is when we go and have a look at the X4 in just a moment, that has 1430 liters of room. So in actual fact, if you really want that coupe design, you're not dropping that much by way of potential storage. As you can see, obviously, we know where it's come from. It's come from the boot, but you still have ample load space even with the coupe roof line. So I would say in terms of this, your option really is dependent upon styling and how often you think you're going to be needing to put things back here. Now, if you're the kind of person who says, yeah, I wanna take my dog round in my really rather expensive M competition, well then this guy could be the winner for you. But whichever way you go, you are gonna get enough space and you're gonna get some nice attention to detail. Have a look under here. We've got some nice discrete storage features. We've also got these movable luggage mounting points, which make life very easy indeed. And of course, a discreet cover for the top. So in terms of what you get, if you're used to this car anyway, you've got bags of room back here. But as I may have mentioned before, if it comes to buying the competition model, come on, it's about the drive, surely. Okay, so you like the styling on the coupe model. You decided that's the one for you. How much of a compromise do you have to make? I think you'd have to agree. That's a pretty great boot. 1,430 liters of load with the seats folded down. And although it may not quite have the practical application of its companion, it does have more than enough room back here. I think unless you're really gonna be wanting to be in and out and in and out of the boot, you can really fit everything you want in the X4. So for me, because we're talking almost identical performance, it really comes down to a matter of personal taste and style. <sighs> now I've got kids, so I guess on balance, if I had to choose, I guess I'm gonna be going with the X3, but for styling and really just for raw, why not? I think this is where my heart belongs. I can live with having less space in the boot. going to be paying a premium for these cars. So I think it's important that it's not only the exterior that demonstrates where you spent your money, but also what's happened to the interior styling. Let's take a closer look and see what's changed. Well, this is an exclusive interior and it really does look rather special. 
Sadly, from our point of view, we can only get these interior seating in leather. This particular finish features Alcantara as well. And I think in future, there might be much more of that type of material available. But for now, it's all leather and there is a lot of nice styling detail throughout. Everything resonates quality as you would expect it to in fairness, but the attention to detail is lovely. Look at the way this stitching line just wraps from the side over onto the top and then just goes straight into this speaker at the end. The choice of match materials here is absolutely lovely and all of these lines are so nicely placed. From the moment you open the door on this car, you think, yes, that's exactly how it should be. Every detail and feature on this car should be echoing what you expect from the performance and the drive of it. And look down here. It's a small detail, but a nice one. That's going to make you smile every time you open the door. Well, that's going to make you smile. I'm not so sure this is. I've always found this to be a little bit of overkill, so I don't know how you feel about it. And that is this. These are lit M badges. So they do a good job of shouting out about your car. If that's something you find appealing, great. I think I could have used a little more subtlety in that department, but that's my personal choice. Let's have a sit in here and see how it feels. Okay, so a lot of the time when we make our films, our viewers regularly say to us, come on, you know, are you being overly keen or enthusiastic about the car? We don't do that. We really just tell you how we experience it, for good or for bad. Bearing in mind that's always our opinion, we try and be as objective as possible. Why am I saying all of this? Well, I just sat down in this chair, which is custom for the competition, and it's fabulous. It's really, really good. It's fully adjustable everywhere, as you'd expect. What I want from BMW, but particularly their M line, and even more particularly with their competition line, is everything to tell me that the focus is on the drive. I already know that we have a brand new specially designed engine, so I'm already expecting very special things of this drive, but I want that experience echoed by everything else that I encounter. And it's such a relief to sit in a car when right from the moment you step into that seat, you can see that the attention to detail that you found with the styling has been continued throughout. So my first interaction with this car is always gonna be sitting in the seat. It feels great. I'm not the smallest guy in the world, but it holds me nicely. And if it didn't, it's fully adjustable anyway. But as you can see, that support around the midsection really keeps me where I want to be in and the more powerful, agile car. That makes all the difference to the drive. Now, we know this steering wheel well, and we are big fans of this steering wheel. It's very intuitive and easy to use. These paddles are really responsive and they are very nicely placed within the car. These buttons, well, if you haven't watched any of our competition videos, I urge you to check it out. They are absolutely fantastic. You can program these so they will set the profile of the drive exactly to what you expect. Now, M2 is often for the fully sports mode, and if you double press that, usually it gives you the question, are you sure you really want to do this? And that's why you have to push it twice to make sure you couldn't have knocked it by accident. Right from the minute you sit down, Everything about the car says drive, and it's very exciting. It really does set the scene nicely for what that brand new engine is going to be delivering. When we conduct our car reviews, we're always comparing at price point, so clearly it's not fair to compare this car to one in a much cheaper segment. But I have very high expectations for this vehicle. It isn't cheap, and therefore I expect everything to be met. I'm so pleased to be able to tell you that so far, everything that I've seen and experienced on this car just makes me feel happy. Listen to this. Now, you might think it's a given that because it's an expensive car, the door should make that noise, but they don't all make that noise. That's a nicely built door. And again, it's matching the quality of the materials and the design finish that I'm experiencing within the rest of the cockpit. So there's nothing here that's going to blow your mind as being different from any other one of BMW's top end cars that you've experienced. The controls are very intuitively laid out. They're actually very straightforward to access and the finish is very nice. They have discovered 
a fairly effective way of keeping piano black plastic fingerprint free. I have no idea how they've managed to do that, but I'm extremely grateful that they have because as you can see, that has not dropped off the design radar of anyone anytime recently. Although we do have in this particular model, some very nice carbon fiber detailing. Everything looks premium. Well, because this is a pre-production car, we can't show you fully how the software interacts with the system, but I can start it up just to bring some life into those displays so you can see what you will be getting or getting an idea of it. So this is not the finished version of the software. It's just to show you how these displays work. And you're gonna to need to listen to a couple of chimes while it tries to get itself configured. So let me switch that off. In terms of how the interior interacts, you will find this is very familiar looking if you are used to these cars. Interestingly, we do not have any Alcantara steering wheel option, which is available on some other competition models. I think I would have liked that, but my understanding is that within this segment, leather steering wheels is just the way that it is. Well, for now, I'm a big fan of Alcantara. What do you think? I really like driving with it and I think it adds something a little special to the car. That's my taste. What's your take? Coming slightly further down, you can see that that styling has been, I would say, effortlessly continued. If you are used to any other new competition model, this will all look very familiar to you. And I think all the better for that because a really a lot of thought and effort has gone into making this work in terms of material and layout. Now, if I hadn't driven one of the newer competitions, I might think, for example, that these buttons and these selectors here weren't maybe the most intuitive and easy to address, but I have, and I can tell you that even if you're looking at them thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm convinced by that, when you actually get to use them, they make perfect sense to you. They're really nice. I appreciate that there aren't a million different options here. There are many different ways of interacting with the infotainment system. We have a jog shuttle wheel here. You can also speak to it. It's also clearly touchscreen. So whatever you find is your personal preference, you'll be able to find a way of doing it with this car. We have a nice large storage bin in the front with an inductive charging pad and of course a USB charging point. And when you don't want to be looking at that clutter, a nice, straightforward, easy, discreet flap. So, okay guys, you will have noticed by now, I'm a pretty big fan of the front experience of this car. Does it deliver the same in the back? Let's go take a look and find out. Well, the immediate answer is yes. The rear seat passengers have not been forgotten. However, I do think it's worth pointing out that if your driver is taking the fullest advantage of all of that power sitting up front, you're not going to be experiencing the same body hold here in the back. So I can imagine you might be doing a little bit of rolling around on the bench seat if your driver is enjoying everything that's at their disposal. But that said, I think if they've got passengers, they might be a little bit more sensitive and you do have the option to somewhat cocoon yourself in here while they're going a little bit nuts. Now there are the standard features that you'd expect. I've never quite been a fan of this, I have to tell you. It's standard through a lot of BMW cars and I just find it, it doesn't have the same way of resonating with quality for me that the rest of the car does. It's a small detail, but it's always in the small details and I just think they could have done a little bit better with that. Ah, it's not such a big deal. We have a standard seat split available back here to access the rear, and of course our own heating and cooling controls in the center. They're nicely finished off, but they're not as nice as the front. I think it's only fair you would expect that. The styling as well, it looks nice, it works well. It's just not quite as good as the front. Well, you know what, who cares? Nobody's buying this car for the rear seat experience. And if you happen to get a lift in one, well, it is premium enough that you will still be appreciating the experience. Well, we always knew the back of the X3 was gonna be a comfortable experience, but the X4 with its swooping roof line, let's find out. Ah, yes, a little bit of a different experience. I'm five feet 10 or 178 centimeters. I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but I do have quite a long torso. 
And as you can see, I would rate this okay. I mean, I'm actually pretty comfortable. I could take a, a reasonable drive back here, but any long distance, it's a no brainer really. If you have tall people that you think you will regularly need to fit into the back of this car, you're gonna need to go with the X3. But if it's only a now and then thing, well, like I said, I could be pretty comfortable back here for a decent stretch of time. As you can see, RX4 has a very different styling to the X3 that we were just in. What's interesting to me is that when you think of the X3 styling, it is a little bit overdone, but when you're in the front, that makes perfect sense, not least because you have the space to explore those design ideas, those colors, those surfaces and textures, but in the back, it felt a little bit busy. When we get into the back here, I like conservative and understated. It makes me feel more cocooned and more relaxed within the space. So interesting. I'm gonna go with the styling in the front of the X3, but in the back, it's all about the X4. Once we get into the front of the X4 with this particular styling, it's really interesting to pick up the difference in contrasts. I am all about the way that that styling looked on the X3. In here, I find in, in the front is a little bit too conservative. This car is all about power and performance and agility, and I don't want it to look too severe. So I wonder if it's possible, BMW, if I could have the front design from the competition specific and the back design from this one. Hmm, what do you think? Let's take a look and see what's powering this beast. Oof, that is a brand new and specially designed six cylinder inline engine. It's exactly the same engine, no matter whether you go for the X3 or the X4, or if you want the standard M or the competition, but the power output is of course different. If you want the M model, that's gonna deliver you 480 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque. If you go with the competition, you get 510, still 600 newton meters of torque. That will deliver you a naught to 62 or 100 kilometers per hour speed of 4.2 seconds for the M or 4.1 for the competition. Wow. Now, it's not only that that's been changed in this car. And I put it to you, given that modern engines are so busy with engine covers and hiding over complicated components, from a design aspect, it's always a little bit of an interesting challenge to see how they're gonna present the engine to us to still make us think, yes, I want it. And I really like the way that this has been finished. This is a very important detail. Because we have so much power in this car now, lots of things have been changed, but one of the most important is the torsional stiffness of the chassis. And for that, we have this special mount. Now, this is optional, this is carbon fiber. We can also get that in metal and you can see these support struts. These deliver such a change dynamic to the driving experience that the engineers claim if you even undo one of these bolts a little bit, they will be able to feel the change in driving dynamic on a regular straight road with no particular drama attached to it. Well, that's quite some claim. But I think once you start getting into using the full power that this engine can deliver, you're really going to be pleased that you have all of those bolts nice and tight. We've been joined by Dirk Hecker, who is the head of development for BMW M, which I would have to say, as jobs go, is probably about as exciting as you can get yes, in, I think so. in automotive. Now, you're a very proud man today because yep. you're standing in front of two of your latest creations. And this isn't just another car launch. This is actually really rather special because this is the first time that you've had these cars in the series. That's right. Please tell me a little bit about them. So it's the first time we offer the new X3 and X4M, um, both um, standard and competition at the same time because we have the experience that the customers want to get both cars at the same time. And these both cars are in competition mode. That means we have 510 horsepower. That's um, the possibility of a new engine we have developed for this car. And in combination with a new chassis setup, I think we have, I call it the M3 and the M4 in the X segment for the first time. 
Now, what's particularly exciting to me about these models is a, a common complaint that you can have with cars of this size is, ah, you know, that's great. They look very nice. They're very stylish. They're comfortable to sit in, but I don't want to sacrifice the performance in order to have that bigger engine, that bigger car. Well, to tackle that issue, you've put something of a beast into both of these cars, haven't that's you? That's right, that's right. A brand new, never before used engine. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, it's a brand new engine. It's a six cylinder with three liter Hooper um, displacement. Sorry for that. So we have in the normal version, 480 horsepower. And in the competition, we have 510 horsepower. We have 600 Newton meters. And that allows in combination with the car uh, acceleration from zero to 100 in 4.2 or 4.1 seconds. So we combined it with the eight speed um, Amstrad Tronic. And with the MX drive, I think we have a very good um, setup overall for the performance of the car. Well, I think if you're gonna put that kind of power into it, you've pretty much knocked out any complaints about there not being enough performance yes. in a larger vehicle. You must have had to have made some significant design changes to the chassis to cope with all of that extra power. Uh, that's right. So we change a lot of in the kinematic and elasto kinematic. That means the rubber elements, the stiffness on the front, but also on the rear axle. We add some additional um, struts for precision of the car. We change also the steering um, system to get this feeling for agility, dynamic and precision typical for an M car. And that's in the combination with the tires and the wheels in 20 or 21 inch and dimensions, I think we get the performance that we want to have in the M car, but also the customer wants to feel in the M car. All right, so I'm convinced we've got the performance we need in here, yes. but it's not just about how the car drives. Yes. If you're going to spend, and let's be honest, it's going to be a significant amount of money on these models. Yes. What do we get in terms of changes of styling over the standard models? So we have a complete different um, bumper in the front, but also in the rear. So we have, um, especially for the cooling of the car, uh, big areas of intake in the front. We have the typical M mirrors. We have um, a different bumper in the rear. So we have a special exhaust system, four pipes with 100 millimeter diameter. So also to see from the outside that this is an M car. In the competition, um, um, combined with a black color. And I think you can see the dynamic and the performance of the car also from the outside, but also from the inside. So it's a combination of sportive exterior, but also very sportive interior. So other than, I mean, I, I'm gonna guess right off the bat that your favorite feature of these new cars is gonna be that new engine. But outside of that, what do you really like? What are you most proud of with these cars? I think overall, there is a car overall, because for the first time we offer in this segment a car, and I think I'm, I'm proud with, with the whole car that we get the performance for the first time in this segment with more than 500 horsepower, and in a, in a segment we never um, have built a car before. I think the overall, I, I prefer the X3 a little bit more, that's my favorite, but it, I think um, it's, it, it's up to you, up to the customer to, to choose between the both cars. Oh, that's really interesting. Is that uh, stylistically because you prefer the, the higher roof line in the back or from a practicality point of view? I think both. Both. I, I like this, um, this shape very much, but I want also to have a four-door car. It's the same with the X4, mm. but also to use uh, the, the rear of the car for, for sportive activities and so on. Oh, well, that's the right answer because yeah. I, I always say, you know, if you're going to buy a car like this, who cares about who's in the back? That's their responsibility. They can buy their own. You know, I, I need to be happy. I'm driving it. Yes, but also my children wants to be uh, happy. But they're small. They don't need the headroom. No, no. Come on, it's fine. No, it's okay. Well, thank you so much for taking You're the welcome. opportunity to show us just a little bit about these cars. I have to say, if they drive even a little bit as well as they look, then I think we are all in for an extremely exciting experience. I promise you, it will work. So what is all of this lovely car going to set you back? Well, if you're buying in Germany and you want to start with the M's, they are going to run you 85 for this one, 87 for this one. If you want to go for the competition, and of course you're going to want to do that, that's 94 and 96,000 euro respectively. Ouch. Okay, so that's not cheap, but come on. I think we all knew it wasn't ever going to be. So this is only a first look and clearly we didn't get to drive the cars. 
but just those numbers from the engine alone. And when I can see the amount of attention to detail that's been put into the design of these vehicles, I have no doubt, no doubt at all that the driving experience is gonna be something pretty special as well. So could a car possibly be worth that kind of money? Well, ultimately that's gonna come down to how much disposable cash you have to spend on a car. And at that price point, yes, there is an awful lot of competition. What I like in particular with BMWs is that generally what you see is what you get. So if you like the styling and you like the traditional BMW drive, I'm really very confident that you won't find anything here to disappoint and only things to make you feel happy. If not, or you haven't tried one, I can only recommend that you give it a go. Now only you know if that sounds like something that you could be prepared to invest your money in. But if you think you can, I can highly recommend that you give them a try because they tend to drive just as well as they look. And if these cars can deliver in a drive what they deliver from a purely aesthetic stationary appearance, hmm, then I'm really quite excited to get behind that wheel. I hope you've enjoyed watching this preview with us. If you have any comments or questions, please pop them below. Please subscribe and we hope we'll see you again soon.